As the age-old saying goes, politics is show business for ugly people, and the Hollywood for this at the moment is of course none other than the Houses of Parliament. But do you know how this building came about? Fear not, today we'll tell you the story of how London's biggest comedy club came into existence. Mr Speaker, I am a fighter and not a quitter. I have therefore spoken to His Majesty the King to notify him that I am resigning as leader of the Conservative Party. Our story goes back to the Middle Ages when the Palace of Westminster was exactly what it said on the tin, a palace, but more specifically a royal one. It was originally built by Edward the Confessor, with the earliest section still around today, Westminster Hall, which was built by William II in the late 11th century. Use of a royal residence would be true up until the 16th century when England's most notable Henry moved out of the Palace of Westminster to down the road into a palace at Whitehall. With the royals moving out, the bureaucrats would move in, and with all the drama which went on with Henry VIII, there was plenty of bureaucrats to do the legal stuff, allowing the area to cement itself as the centre of law and governance. On the 16th of October 1834, a fire broke out which destroyed much of the complex. The monarch at the time, King William VI, offered Parliament the nearly completed Buckingham Palace, with William trying to depose his disliked residence. However, the building would be considered unsuitable for Parliament use and was subsequently rejected. The plan would be to build a brand new building on the existing site. The type of style the new Parliament would be constructed in was much debated. A neoclassical style similar to the White House was popular at the time, but was considered to be associated with revolution and republicanism, whilst Gothic style was thought to embody conservative values. It was expected that the new building would not take the original layout of the old palace, but would incorporate the surviving Westminster Hall, Undercroft Chapel, and the cloisters of St Stephen. In 1836, a public competition was carried out to design a new palace, with 97 entries being submitted. The winning proposal would be from an architect called Charles Barry, who proposed the Gothic style palace. Construction on the new palace began in 1840, with the building sitting on huge concrete raft foundations, which required extending the site into the River Thames by a total of eight acres. This required building a 920 foot coffer dam within the Thames to provide a dry dock and create a river wall, allowing the river foundations of the palace to be constructed. The palace was to have three main towers, with the tallest being the Victoria Tower, standing at 98.5 meters, and would serve as a royal entrance to the building as well as contain records of Parliament. On the other side of the palace was the Clock Tower, later known as the Elizabeth Tower, which is only 2 metres shorter than the Victoria Tower, standing at 96 metres, and is home to London's famous 13-tonne bell. No, not that one, but Big Ben of course. Smallest of the towers is the Central Tower at 91 metres, and was built to be essentially a massive chimney for the many hundreds of fireplaces within the building. The chamber for the House of Lords was completed in 1847, with the Commons being finished by 1852, and the palace was finally completed by 1876, taking more than 30 years longer than was estimated, and costing over two times the expected costs, with the total bill being £2 million. The building was not to escape damage during World War II, when a German bombing raid in 1941 hit the House of Commons chamber, which was completely destroyed and would take until 1950 to fully rebuild the chamber. With the palace being over 150 years old, you can naturally expect the building to be rather dated and drop into bits. As a result, a multi-billion pound restoration is underway to bring the building into the 21st century. The works include asbestos removal, improved fire safety, rewiring and conservation work of the building. With regards to how long this will all take, well, that will depend on whether the MPs vacate the palace or not during the works. If MPs do leave, then it will take between 19 and 28 years, however if they stay in the building, it's estimated this could add an extra 20 years on to completion time. When the works are finally completed, it will give one of the world's most beautiful parliament buildings a new lease of life. Shame the same can't be said for its brother up north. He is so shit. <laughs>